more often than not, he just gets up there and kind of talks. You know, we, we, we had one of these yesterday live from Mar-a-Lago that uh, I, I took the liberty of going to take some of the, the, the highlights just so we can go over them because yeah. he was up there for like an hour and a half. And <laughs> the average person does not have that kind of time no. to sit down and break all this, all this down. And was it unscripted, um, Connor? Did you have uh, a-, a lot of it was unscripted. He had a statement. Then he, he, he made some, some brief remarks. Then he took questions gotcha, from gotcha, the press. Gotcha, gotcha. He hasn't done a press conference. And, but before we get into that, I need to do a direct take to camera here. Yeah. Tomorrow will be four weeks since this guy was shot in the friggin' head <laughs> on national television. And nobody remembers or cares yeah. anymore. We have moved on. We care about other things now. We're talking about other subjects. People, four weeks ago, <laughs> they shot him in the MF in head. <laughs> Don't let them distract you from that. That was pretty significant. I have a friend who I literally we were on a con- we were on the phone last night. It's my best friend of got twenty six years. I've known him for, and we disagree politically on everything. He actually said that by repeating that Donald Trump was shot in the ear or head, I am fear mongering. And I went, hey, can you explain that to me? Because even the FBI came out and said Donald Trump was shot in the ear. So you're now you've. All this time, he's always been, you must trust the FBI when they were doing Russian collusion, when they, yep. COVID is going on. You must trust the FBI. All of a sudden, the FBI comes out with a finding, and they say, well, Donald Trump was shot in the head. And he's like, well, you can't trust the FBI. Y- that quick, <laughs> that's one weird. sentence. And, and Con- yeah, and Connor, I want, no, great point. And, I, and dude, I, I absolutely love your, your, your passion. I've never seen you like this. And because you're absolutely right, they're brushing this over, and now it's Kamala, it's Waltz, it's the, it's the election. It's like, and, and guess what? Any average normal person that's awake is piecing together all the p- parts of the puzzle from from you know Cheadle to FBI to the photo that the video that we just saw. It looks like it was beyond gross negligence. It looked like it was orchestrated to look like they were incompetent. But go ahead, Connor. Yes. Please keep going. But they, they they took the little bit of time right at the beginning to you know try to avoid attacking Trump in in the. 48 hours after he got shot. But yeah. then after a while, yeah. you know, they made fun of the bandage, and then yeah, now yeah. they're just right back where, where they was, It was like three days. They gave yeah. him three days. He got shot on Saturday. Sunday, we're sorry. Monday, we're going to investigate. Tuesday, it's look all- at that bandage. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, un- but, oh, could you imagine if you ever did that to any of the kids that were involved in Uvalde or any other gunshot victim in, in history? My Mike Brown, uh, Corey Bush just tweeted out that Mike Brown, remember the kid from Ferguson yeah, yeah. that attacked the police officer yeah. and a store clerk, and then the police officer yeah. shot him and killed him? Corey Bush put out, like, oh, he'd be 18 years old today. Oh, God rest up. his soul. Good Lord. Could you imagine if I got on here and I went, ah, oh, the kid deserved to die. The kid should have gotten yeah. shot. If yeah. I made fun of a gun Which shooting victim. Which is the victim, correct take on Michael Brown, by but the way. I don't disagree. Oh. But if I got on here and did that, people would be like, oh, cancel that guy. But it's okay for the left, the liberal, the compassionate media, to mock a gunshot victim? Yeah. yeah okay. and the pres- well, anyway. The, the, the call definitely went out to the media outlets that were covering this. We have a selection of headlines to go over the, of what they wrote. Salon. About. Yeah. Now, these are all very, very this? leftist. It, it, it's Salon, USA Today, Huffington Post. Communists. All of them agreed. <laughs> all of them agreed. Rambling. The Associated Press actually had the word rambling in the body of its analysis of it as well, but they edited it to say, uh, you know, wide-ranging Huh. Instead, because rambling. apparently rambling was a little bit too partisan. You for mean them. his speech? Yes. Yeah, well, Trump was rambling. Right, 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 I mean, right, 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 right. well, yeah. I, I, if I may, in fairness, I found him to be rambling. Yeah, Trump. I rambles. actually think he was doing it on purpose mm-hmm. to show them, hey, dudes, this is what transparency looks like. Someone who's unscripted and taking questions for exactly. an hour and a half. And I'm not a Kamala Harris jackass. That's the most important point. Let's go to our first clip here. Trump comes out with a brief statement as he's approaching the microphone, talks about the risk of World War III. Let's roll that. Nice. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your being here. Uh, just a statement before I talk about debates. I think that our country is right now in the most dangerous position it's ever been in from an economic standpoint, from a safety standpoint. Uh, both gangs on the street and, frankly, gangs outside of our country in the form of other countries that are, frankly, very powerful. They're very powerful countries, and we don't know what we're doing. We have leadership that has no clue how to handle them or how to handle any other situation. thousand percent right. We have a, uh, we have a lot of bad things coming up. You could end up in a depression of the 1929 variety, which would be a devastating thing. It took many years, took decades to recover from it. 
Uh, and we're very close to that. We're very close to a world war. In my opinion, we're very close to a world war. We have people that don't know how to handle it. Uh, they're not respected. Mm. All over the world, they're left at. Mm -hmm. And we can't have that. Most dangerous period of time I've ever seen for our country. Boom. 1,000% so, right on so, everything. Sobering words from, from President Donald Trump right there. And he's correct. With all, with all the global conflicts, the idea of another four years of the Biden-Harris administration or now the harris walls administration we're screwed essentially yeah but what vinny's talked about internationally all comes here yep we're next yep uh our next clip back to viva's point about kamala harris not giving unscripted presidential interviews you realize that since being tapped to replace biden on the democratic ticket she has not talked off script to cameras one time at all, at all. Well, hold on. when did she uh, try to explain uh, the cloud and inflation oh that was a while i, I believe ago. that was before <laughs> that yeah. was back when she was yeah. still just vice president She's horrible <laughs> let's roll this next one because trump made sure to make that point about what harris has been up to all right can we play this clip Okay. Mr. President, Mr. President, you have not had a public campaign event for nearly a week now. Tomorrow you'll be in Montana, which is not a swing state. Some of your allies have expressed concern that you're not taking this race seriously, particularly what at a, a time question. where there is a... <laughs> Bitch, I was just shot in the ear. Why haven't you been campaigning this week? Uh, because I'm leading by a lot and because I'm letting their convention go through. Uh, and I am campaigning a lot. I'm doing tremendous amounts of uh, taping here. We have commercials that are at a level I don't think that anybody's ever done before. Plus, in certain cases, I see many of you in the room where I'm speaking to you on phones, I'm speaking to radio, I'm speaking to television. Yep. Uh, television's okay. coming over here. Excuse me, what are we doing right now? Yeah. Yeah. She's not doing any news conference. You know why she's not doing it? Because she can't do a news conference. Yes. She doesn't know how to do a news conference. She's not smart enough to do a news conference. And I'm sorry, we need smart people to lead this country because our country has never been in this danger before, both economically and from an outside, from an outside perspective. Russia doesn't respect us anymore. China doesn't respect us anymore. North Korea, Kim Jong-un liked me a lot. He doesn't like this group. We, we are in great danger. We're great danger of being in World War Three. That could happen. Gavel? No, after their convention, yeah, and I'm going out, actually I'm going out to certain places to help certain senators get elected, not even for me. I'm trying to help when I go out to Wyoming or when I go out to Montana or I'm going to different places to help people. And I don't have to go there because I'm leading those states, as you know, by 35, 40, 50 points. I'm leading by record numbers. I'm going because I want to help senators and congressmen get elected. Congressmen and women get elected. Yes, please. What a stupid question. I love that. Yeah, it, it, that's it, first of all, the important line. It's a stupid question. Oh, you haven't been out in a week. I was like, ma'am, I just got shot in the ear four yeah. weeks ago. And what do you want? You, you haven't done an open, um, an open, uh, yeah, what is it? Rally called? out. Rally out in a field with unsecured buildings. <laughs> stupid question yeah. from a stupid journalist. Well, and also he was told the Secret Service recommended that he not go out and do rallies in outdoor settings because yeah. they could not yeah. guarantee his safety. Yeah. Almost I, by design. I saw a very interesting tweet yesterday Kamala Harris was in. Is it called Eau Claire, Wisconsin? E A U Claire, Wisconsin. Oh, Claire. Oh, Claire. Uh, this is according to Kamala Harris's speech. It will be a day one priority to fight to bring down prices. I'll take on big corporations that engage in illegal price gouging. I'll take on corporate landlords that unfairly raise rents. I will take on big pharma and the cap and cap the cost of drugs. Should You're in office yeah. now. <laughs> what do you mean day one? Yeah. We're on day how many? She's been in office for three years. We're, We're on wrong. day nine hundred yeah. and something, you, and yeah. you've done shit, idiot. Yeah, go tell so Joe long. Biden. Yeah, guess guess what? Joe Biden's right there. Tell him. Well, if he it, even if he's lot. there, <laughs> the clip the clip was even worse. The the actual quote is even worse because before she said that, she said, "When I was Attorney General, I went after price gouging companies." I was like, "So you're relying on your experience from when you were Attorney General to solve a problem that you caused when you were Vice President that you will solve when you become President? You are indeed the dumbest DEI hire of all time, the history of politics." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we we can skip over this next clip because this is him talking about the debates they have scheduled. Uh, I believe Harris has now agreed to a debate on September 10th. ABC, right? Yes. She turned down the other two. 
but you know, Trump Trump challenged her to three debates. Wait, she, but she was the one that was calling him out and saying, "If you have something, remember, if you have something to say, say, say it to my, my face." face. Well, <laughs> she got all weirdly southern black. Yeah. All of Indian, a her Indian side, her uh, well, Indian well, she, side. It's it's called code switching, Rob. It's okay when she does it. She's allowed to change how. She uh, but talks. I guarantee you, her real family in India is like, "What is she doing? I don't know why. <laughs> why you're black? I don't know what you're." <laughs> Anybody see um, Kevin Sorbo's tweet yesterday? Oh no. my goodness. <laughs> If she really thinks she's black, drop the N word and see what happens. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, Pat says, let the market decide. decide. Go ahead, Kamala, yeah, let the market Kamala. decide. Yeah. Uh, yes. oh, by the way, just one thing before I forget. In, in that clip, the one you just showed where he said, she's not smart enough to do it. Fake news headline actually ran with he's insulting women. I forget who it was on yeah, Twitter. Shut saying up. Women are not smart. No, he's not saying that woman is not yeah, smart enough right. because she isn't. You, you you called women pigs and just got just Rosie O'Donnell. Just Rosie O'Donnell, 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 O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Who, who actually lost her mind yesterday yeah. too. But go ahead. Vinny, I think you'll you'll get a kick out of this one. This is him talking about Harris's plans for gun control when oh, she's in great. office. Okay. Let's roll that. Take your guns. Oh boy. Here we go. And she wants to take away everyone's gun. If you take away guns, you can't do it. Because people need the guns for protection. Now, entertainment they wanted, hunting they would, you know, different things. But they need weapons for protection in this country. People live out in the woods and they're not going to have a gun. If you look at a, some some countries, I don't want to go, I don't want to get them in trouble. But some countries yeah. have actually gone Australia. the opposite way. They had very strong gun laws, and oh, now they Mexico. have gone the opposite Venezuela. way, where they allowed people to have guns, where in one case they encourage people to go out and get guns, and crime is down 29%. Which country is he talking about? And remember this. What is the toughest gun law in the United States? Chicago. Chicago. Yes. On July 4th, 117 people were shot and 17 died. Weird. The toughest gun laws in the United States are in the city of Chicago. You know that. They had 117 people shot. Afghanistan does not have that. <laughs> <laughs> but and this is this is back to the <laughs> Joe Rogan yes. says that he's got good delivery and good comedic he's delivery. Con- yeah. This is it's- the point about the rambling too is that they want to say oh he's just throwing out all these random points. He came prepared with that statistic. Oh yeah. He right. knew that off the cuff. Yep. Where he he knew the data about how many people were killed in Chicago on 4th of July weekend because every time there's a holiday weekend Chicago residents have to kill each other to celebrate he knew that he was able to bring it up off the cuff with no prep it's not like he was reading it off a piece of paper just on the off chance somebody brought it up he knew it and that that's where the rambling point falls apart because he's not rambling he's bringing up answers to all their questions i can understand the accusation of the rambling a question that started off about vaccines ended up with uh the withdrawal from afghanistan but i mean the bottom line uh, it's a discussion, and it's if you want rigid answering the questions and reading the teleprompter, well, I mean, I wouldn't even say go ask Joe Biden to do it because he can't. But uh, also on the point of uh, the strict gun laws, I mean, just take countries with the strictest gun laws. The stricter the gun laws get in Canada, the more crime violence goes up. Violent crime. Mexico, strictest gun laws everywhere, anywhere, pretty much. Worst gun violence, pretty much anywhere. I think it's pretty bad in Venezuela as well. Venezuela, yeah. It's, it's like, did, it's Where did correlative. Mexico get all its guns that... That might be our bad, but yeah, whatever. whatever. Well, I think I, Obama might be. Able yes, to I love that his one. hands. His, yeah. it's like he's conducting an orchestra of political content. Well, you, so you way, saw the meme it, where he's playing. You, you know what it is? He takes all the words that he wants to say <laughs> and he kind of puts them here, and then he goes in there and he grabs them. <laughs> no, what up? He no, grabs. No, <laughs> it's it's all very very open, unless unless he's gesturing to one person, then it's. Yeah, but you then know, it's like, and, and yeah, you, got, quiet, you, you know, gotta do something with your hands when you're talking, just as long as you don't look like Hakeem Jeffries, who's conducting an orchestra oh, he's the that worst. only he can hear. Yeah. Extreme, mega, Republican. Yeah, that guy's a freak. Him and Gavin <laughs> Newsom are doing jujitsu while they talk. Yeah, Gavin Newsom's a freak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this next one, Trump is now talking about the second time he's going to have to run against a woman for office. Uh, first time, obviously, was Hillary Clinton. Killed. This next time is like Walmart brand Hillary Clinton, mm. right down to the cheap pants suit. <laughs> Let's hear his comparison oh, between these, his female rivals. So I've run against Hillary, and uh, I've run against various other people. Uh, I would say that uh, in terms of intelligence, Hillary was far superior. I would say that Hillary was smart. Uh, she was her own worst enemy in many ways, but she was smart, very smart. Okay? If you ask me to compare him, please. Okay. <laughs> well, 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 I, I mean, think that's a classy response. We didn't yeah. call her dumb. He called Hillary no, no, smart. No, 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 Hillary is, is cunning. She's deceitful. She's evil. She's disgusting. 
and she's smart. Like, bro, think about it. She what the whole Russia collusion. She got with the law firm. She made them you know, go to FISA court and the FBI. And he's a Russian asset. Bro, people still believe it. What a tactic. I mean, you're an idiot and you got caught because there was nothing actually that happened. Oh, no, but there, there was Russia collusion. It just happened to be between the DNC and Russia. Yeah, Russia. exactly. Mm. Go ahead, go. So no. now Trump is also speaking out in defense of Joe Biden, who uh -oh. was oh, this un undermined by his own party so Kamala could come in. Let's hear his defense of uh, Sleepy Joe. We have a constitution. It's a very important document, and we live by it. She has no votes, and I'm very happy to run against her. I, I'm not complaining from that standpoint. And I hate to be defending him, but he did not want to leave. He wanted to see if he could win. They said, you're not going to win after the debate. They said, you're not going to win. You can't win. You're out. And at first they said it nicely and he wasn't leaving. And then you, you know that you know it better than anybody. But anyway, so uh, when you think about it, they said at first they were going to go out to another vote. They were going to go through a primary system, a quick primary system, which it would have to be. And then it all disappeared and they just picked a person that was the first out. She was the first loser. OK, so we call her the first loser. She was the first loser <laughs> when uh, during the primary system, during the Democrat primary system, she was the first one to quit and she quit. She had no votes, no support. And she was a bad debater, by the way, very bad debater. Yeah. And uh, that's not the thing I'm looking forward to. But she was a bad debater. She did obviously a bad job. She never made it to Iowa. Then for some reason, and I'm, I know he regrets it, you do too, uh, he picked her <laughs> and she turned on him too. She was working with the people that wanted him out. But the fact that you can be, get no votes, lose in the primary system, in other words, you had 14 or 15 people, she was the first one out, and that you can then be picked to run for a president, it well, wow. seems, seems to me actually unconstitutional. Perhaps but, it's not, okay, please. Okay, and, and can I ask you a question? Where's, got Rob? Do me a favor, all of you guys. Where's the rambling? Those are yeah, those are that. facts. Those are facts that literally bother people because he's saying them out loud. That's the, and this is what I love to tell Democrats. You're such a you hear democracy and the, you're so democratic and threat to democracy. How democratic is it that you idiots didn't even vote for this unpopular? I don't even want to say it because I'm trying to be a good person. Good. I, you saw what I did. I, I'm picking out. <laughs> like, bro, you're like, where's your democracy? They, they, you, nobody likes her. And this is the thing, Dave, I've been saying this a lot. Nobody wants to vote for Kamala. Now they have to. You have to vote for her because it's anything but Trump, anything but Hitler, you idiots. Not our viewers. but You know, I, I found if you say biatch, it gets biatch. more well received. Yeah. It, it, Everything he said is a thousand percent true. Yes. Uh, this was a Soviet style selection. Yeah. The party of democracy, the Democrats are the party of, uh, I don't know what the it's KKK? called. KKK? It's fascism. I mean, oh, what you yeah, have here exactly. is the media literally changing the script overnight to now say that Kamala is not an incompetent, terrible choice of a VP, that she's uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Did you see that clip of her uh, admonishing the pro-Palestinian Oh, protesters? we'll get to that. Oh, okay. Because oh, okay. I, I, I want to vomit when I, I see that. your assessment of that pinned at the oh, end. Oh, okay. And, 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 and no, Connor, like Connor, I'm going to give it to Connor. And just, just let, let's all remember, and when I say these people, because you helped me tweet this, the same people, the same mainstream media, that whole group that tried to convince you that Donald Trump was Hitler are the same people right now that are trying to tell you that she's the savior. She's going to do everything. She's not going to do anything. So if you like your life the way that it is right now, please go bring your ass there and go vote for her. If you if you want this life, the life that you have, congratulations. Rosie O'Donnell, all you all you elite losers, keep voting for her. Yeah, go so now we got a couple rapid fire clips we got to get through because this is where racial dynamics started to come back up. First, it was somebody asking Trump about January 6th and his other speeches, and he compared himself to Martin Luther King Jr. Let's watch that. Love it. <laughs> Never see the picture of the crowd, the biggest crowd I've ever spoken. I've spoken to the biggest crowds. Nobody's spoken to crowds bigger than me. <laughs> if you look at Martin Luther King when he uh, did his speech, his great speech, and you look at ours, same real estate, same everything, same number of people. If not, we had more. <laughs> and they said he had a million people, but I had 25,000 people. But when you look at the exact same picture, and everything's the same because it was the fountains, the whole thing, all the way back to uh, from Lincoln to Washington. And you look at it, 
and you look at the picture of his crowd, my crowd, uh, we actually had more people. They said I had 25,000, and he had a million people. And I'm okay with it, because I liked Dr. Martin Luther King. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice of him to clarify there. You know, he, he, yeah, I had more than I have a dream speech in attendance, but that's okay. I, I'm not going to make a big thing. Yeah, I it's, like all good. It. it's all good. It's all good. Up next. I, I, I do believe yeah. that those are actual. He's trolling the media. To, I, of course. I, I, there's no f- question. He's effing with them for that's sure. Been, that's been the thing since the inauguration. I had more people than Jesus when Jesus gave his speech. I don't know if that's <laughs> yeah, a Yeah, Jesus speech. was there, yeah. but uh, guess what? I, and I like I like him, so it's I don't mind competing with Martin Luther King and the greatest. Yeah, he's like I turned. Yeah, it, G, yeah, he turned water to wine. I turned. Dojo but what, to what is amazing <laughs> is they, they call him petty for trying to you know h- highlight the numbers. <laughs> yeah, uh, and they don't understand that they are petty for trying to uh, underplay the numbers that he gets. They can't. He's, admit it's it. amazing. It's well, amazing. And I did see and kind of. Please, I want you to finish. I saw a a, a photo. You know the I don't know where Kamala's plane was, and it was the back of all these people. Who her plane was uh, showing up, and then you see a bunch of people on their phones. It looked all AI that shot because mm-hmm. everybody's phone was pr- like not showing what you were seeing through the lens. Someone allegedly ran it through. I don't know if you can determine if the photo's thing. fake, and it said it's like ninety somewhat percent uh, fake. And but it, like, it was H- on the people and the hands all have like yeah. ninety seven, fingers. It, it definitely it, looked like HDR at the very least, yeah. and a very narrow HDR. Yeah. But yeah, go it, ahead, it's huh? very messed up. Um, this next one, Trump talked about his performance with different voting groups. And I'll make an interesting point at the the end of this. All right, let's play this one, Jake. A big part of the strategy for your campaign before Harris became the nominee was appealing to black voters. That was something you were really going after. In polls, we really see Harris gaining ground with that group. And I'm wondering how you are going to go after black voters now that she's the nominee and and really winning them over. Well, it changes around a little bit. I'm getting other voters. Uh, perhaps, you know, I was doing very well with black voters, and I still am. Uh, I seem to be doing very well with uh, black males. This is according to polls, as you know. Uh, it's possible that I won't do as well with black women, but I do seem to be doing very well with other segments, uh, extremely well with Hispanic. Uh, Jewish voters way up. Yep. White males way up. White males have gone through <laughs> way, up, way up. Yeah. Males way up. Uh, <laughs> I'm Middle Eastern, yeah. but still. So white males. He's, he's, I, I think that has a lot to do with the white dudes for Harris video chat yeah. a few weeks ago. Where, that, like I said during the episode where we talked about that, that was one of the first times I've ever heard white men acknowledged as an actual voting block. Ever, ever. And now Trump's doing the same thing. Like, of course, white males are way up for Trump. That's been like his his most secure group. So for him to actually seem excited about that as a white male voter is is you know nice to hear. Yeah. But he it he's also saying you know we, we're doing up we're up with Jewish voters we're up with Hispanic voters we're up with uh, black men we might lose black women they're for sure gonna lose childless cat ladies but yeah that's kind of J D Vance's fault yeah not that they were doing great with that audience anyway yeah but his point about Jewish voters shows that. Right now, because of the Israel-Hamas conflict, the Jewish vote seems very much up for grabs. Here's this next clip of him talking about Jewish people who vote for Harris. Got it. And I say it, if anybody I know is Jewish and they would vote for Kamala over me, they should have their head examined. (laughs) (laughs) He's a thousand percent right yet again. What has always driven me crazy is under, trying to understand why the demographic, Jews and blacks, like, what is it, 80-plus percent vote Democrat, if why? not more. Why? And I don't understand why. I, when the policies they've implemented uh, have simply not worked. I also don't understand why there is that virtual uh, ideological unanimity or uniformity among a very broad demographic. What's the syndrome where you fall in love with your abuse? Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome is in the community of the uh, black community and the Jew- they, I, well, it's, what, it's, it's, what makes you keep if you don't like what's happening and it's been bad for all this time, why do you keep voting for the same people? I don't get it. It's branding. It's because you think that if you vote Democrat, it makes you a good person. And, uh-huh. and it's been branded like that. If you vote liberal, it makes you a liberal. The irony is it's quite the opposite. Uh-huh. And I don't like, like you know, he's a thousand percent right. Yeah. And, and any person who identifies as Jewish and then says, I'm going to now vote for the party that Josh Shapiro was a scumbag of all scumbags. Yeah. Not picking him is not an act of anti-Semitism. Just looking at the uh, anti, <laughs> looking at the sentiment within the party. Uh, it's not it's not a welcoming party for any ethnic religious minority, and people need to understand that. Of course. Which brings us to our last clip, because 
Kamala Harris is also clearly making a play for the Jewish vote. And the, the, <laughs> the fact that the Democratic base has shifted so heavily against Israel in, in a lot of ways. And, you know, we, we, t- we talk about Israel a lot on this podcast. I feel like it comes up. But all the people who are pro-Palestine, pro-Hamas are definitely Democrat voters right now. There's a huge chunk of the base that has been carved off because of that issue. And some of them showed up at a Harris rally to protest her. Here's her response to them when they started. She's getting that. heckled? Oh, wait, wait. Please don't tell me she's oh, no, a You're going to vomit oh, okay, when you see her uh, face. Go ahead. Oh, no. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis, and he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking. Oh, you oh, go, girl. Go, girl. Snap. Oh, look, oh. Wait, wait. Look at her face. Look at her face. And then she gets a scowl on it. it, it it's the substitute teacher trying yeah. to quiet down an unruly class. Look at, right there, right there. Huh? You want some oh, more? That's, you want oh. some more? You want... And it's 45 seconds of no. her staring down. Look at, like, that's because her brain is empty. Yeah, so there's just nothing rolling look at her around now, her she, head right she's, she's thinking about she thinks... who she can sleep with to make this stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she thinks that she has just, like, won the, won the yeah, battle. She's As you can see, my little sticky note. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. She, go, did you see the protesters in the back who she was actually like punching down on? Yeah, it, it, it's just a bunch of kids, co- college kids, kids. Who, are, who 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 believe wrongly or rightly that there's a genocide going on, and they want their voices to be heard. This itch bay scowls at them, <laughs> and then she, mm-hmm, you want him to win? Keep saying that. Otherwise, I'm talking. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. And That's as, democracy. As I, bring this yeah. to, as I bring this to a close, just so we can look at it while we talk. Throw up. Uh, throw up the next tweet. Oh, I, I already threw there. up just, a little bit. Just, oh, just real quick. Viva. <laughs> um, that's from Viva. I know that guy. Yeah. Uh, Kamala Harris gets heckled and reacts like a prissy, entitled kindergarten teacher. Viva, your thoughts that led to led to this uh, take. She, it makes me sick to look at her and like stare them at her. She goes like this. Hmm? Hmm? Are you, are you, you understood? Hmm? <laughs> like, like, like she's children. got her mob of sycophants. Like, shut up. I, I, I didn't invite you here to hear you. It's like Obama. Remember when he got heckled? He's like, I'm talking now. You'll have your chance. You can talk. Yeah. They never give him a chance to talk no, later. No. This is about browbeating, but also in Michigan, to then dump on an element of her party and say, like, I'm not, I'm of her party. Of party. Her party <laughs> although it is a party. <laughs> I, it, it, it makes me, I look at that video over and over again, but then I look at the video of Trump getting up after getting shot in the ear and saying, wait, 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 and putting his fist up and saying, fight, fight, fight. And the crowd not saying, we're not going back. Oh, because at the end of that video, it's like, we're not going back. We're not going back. Yeah. The crowd chanting USA, staying cool, staying calm, staying collected, staying American. It's it's the difference between night and day. It's actually, it's very representative of both of the candidates. One guy is wanting the American people his last message because he didn't know if there were other shooters there. They had no idea. You just got shot. You were down for 30 seconds. They lift you up, and he tells the crowd to fight, fight, fight. That's his response, to continue to fight and try and preserve the American way, whereas Kamala Harris's response is, quiet down, I'm talking. You shut up, I'm speaking. Yeah. Trump's fight, hers, shut up. And that speaks volumes about the Republican Party and the Democratic Party and how they look at their constituents and treat their voters. It's yeah. also very reminiscent of her debate with Mike Pence back when you know they were having the vice presidential face-off in 2020. Where, you know, they were doing the typical back and forth thing of, you know, politicians speak over each other during debates. Only she did the snap look at him and said, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. Mm-hmm. And that was like people were putting that on mugs and T-shirts. Of like, yes, you go, girl. Yeah. Tell, put him in his place. It was, it was like this you, you, moment of female empowerment. But that's not how politicians talk to each other. It's not just that. It's that she knows she can get away with it because she's a woman. And she can play the woman card and say, when I say it, it's a man talking over a woman. So of we're course. not actually right. equal. I'm um, actually going to play that inferiority card. It's, even worse, she's a black woman. So how dare you as a white man now over talk a black woman? So not only are you sexist, you're also racist and you don't respect black women of color. Well, and, and, and you're anti-Semitic because her husband's Jewish. Uh, so you are uh, and, anti-Indian, anti-black, well, anti-Jew, is, and what anti-woman. Great, you got to give the Democrats credit. What a great move, bro. What a great move to have her be in there as a DEI hire because that's exactly what the hell she was. She has no no business being the vice president. She makes zero decisions. She's the border czar. She's never been to the border. She, what a what a come on, you got to give them you got to tip your hat. They they put her in for this exact type of scenario which it's not by accident. This is all on purpose and you guys nailed it because now you can't talk like that to a woman of color. What are you what do you and but cuz you know and the, the the only problem is Donald Trump doesn't give a damn. Donald Trump doesn't care. He's like, I thought she was Indian. Oh, now she's black? And there's now headlines coming out about how the media is afraid 
of how Trump will navigate the touchy situation of being on stage with a black woman. Well, yeah, guess They're what? Already he setting loves the, stage the blacks, and the blacks course. love yeah. him. He said that. <laughs> Kamala will well probably vote for him. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm so good, Kamala's going to vote for me when uh, she realizes how bad she is. Yeah, Dan. All right. What's up, everybody? Vincent O'Shawn here. If you want to see me and the entire Valuetainment crew, we will be at the Vault Conference September 4th through the 7th at the Palm Beach Convention Center, hosted by none other than Patrick McDavid and featuring Dwayne The Rock. Johnson. Guys, this is the place to be. If you are an entrepreneur and you want to level up, do not miss this opportunity. This is the best place to network. If you want tickets, go to thevaultconference.com. Do not waste time. This thing is going to sell out, and I will see you guys there. Peace and love. So if you like this clip, click right here. And if you want to see more like it, click right here. Stay angry, patriots.